Hello and welcome back to another brand new Doctor Who review. I do notice that that poster is kicked up. I can't be bothered to go fix it. But yeah, welcome back to another brand new Doctor Who review where I'm covering the 2009 specials. Kind of. As you can tell by the thumbnail, it shows the three uh, episodes that I am covering being the Planet of the Dead Easter special, the 2009 autumn special the waters on of uh, the waters of mars as well as the animated dreamland episode why am i not including uh the end of times parts one and two because you know it does count as the 2009 specials it's also a christmas special so i will get to that later on in the year like with the other Christmas specials that I have not reviewed, like The Runaway Bride, the 2007 uh, Voyage of the Damned, 2008's The Next Doctor. Um, so I will get to those eventually. So let's start this off with the first Easter special, Planet of the Dead. Now, this is the very first HD story of Doctor Who um, and I remember watching it in my dad's yeah I went to stay with him his partner and my uh, granny on my dad's side for Easter uh, when this special was out and I remember watching it in the room that I had and uh, it was okay I remember thinking it was okay but upon, you know, rewatch, because I haven't really seen it much since um, it first aired back in 2009. I think this might be like a second or third rewatch. Um, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, I enjoyed it on, on this current rewatch, you know. It's not as bad as, as I remember it. But the one person that I definitely do not like is Lady Christine. I just find her character to be kind of annoying and stuff. Uh, but other, otherwise, you know, having Lee Evans being as Malcolm, a part of UNIT, um, and, you know, seeing UNIT again, you know, we haven't really seen them since uh, Turn Left, and that was in a parallel universe. Um, you know, it's nice to see them again. Uh, actually, no, sorry, I'm mistaken. The last time we saw them was briefly in Journey's End slash Stol The Stolen Planets. So I, I I will correct myself there. But yeah, you know, it's it's an okay episode. Um, but it's also in this episode that we get the, you know, he will knock four times, your song is ending, from one of the bus passengers who is somewhat of a psychic and uh yeah this is you know the indication that the doctor is at the end of his life which obviously we knew uh beforehand because he did announce his departure uh in these four specials um so yeah decent enough i definitely enjoyed it more on my on this current rewatch than what I remembered, you know, it's not, it's not the best, it's not the worst, it's just okay, uh, but yeah, just to give you kind of like an idea of when I'm recording this, um, this video isn't actually going to be due out until at least sometime in, in May, I haven't fully decided yet, I'm recording this in March, because I literally just watched these two episodes, it's actually the 13th of March, and I just watched these two episodes back to back. And um, yeah, I'm actually going to go in release order uh, of timeline. Because I initially thought Dreamland um, took place before the, the Waters of Mars. And that it can still technically be the case. But I'm going in release order where this came out. And then this was released several days later on the CBBC. Um, until December 9th. Uh, so yes, the Water on Mars. Um, 
which is another co-written episode because the Planet of the Dead was written by Russell T. Davies and Gareth Roberts. And now The Waters of Mars has been co-written by Russell T. Davies and Phil Ford. Now, this is an episode that a lot of people absolutely love and adore. And I I agree. Like, I, I don't think it's so overrated um, whatsoever. This really does hold up. And this is also the tail end slash beginning of the Time Lord Victorious arc, which I will get to. So the basic plot, you know, of, of this is basically the Doctor is tasked once again with a fixed point in time. Where once he realizes it, he keeps trying to go, but he's, you know, constantly been dragged into these sorts of uh, events. And eventually, um, after the rocket has to, you know, be self-destructed due to the infection, um, that's when the Time Lord Victorious finally snaps. I'm very bad at clicking my finger, so we'll just go with that. So yeah, the Time Lord Victorious. You see, the one thing that I've I've loved about my rewatch so far of the David Tennant era is that you notice things, you know, once you know about the Time Lord Victorious, you start to notice things showing up early on. Now, I have been making mention of this, you know, in my uh, Christmas Invasion review last December, I make mention of it, you know, with how after the Doctor spares the Sycorax leader's life, he then, the Sycorax leader obviously goes to attack the Doctor from behind, and the Doctor just without a moment's hesitation, throws a Satsuma uh, at the wall and kills the Sigrek leader. And as I quote, and I quote, I'm at no second chances. I'm that sort of person. And then throughout, you know, season two, we, there's there are certain instances where we see it, you know, in the Idiot's Lantern, uh, mainly when he's the Doctor separated from Rose, that we see it. There are certain episodes in season three and season f and season four that we do see it and it all in ends up in this now there is of course the time lord victorious ex uh, expanded media in books and audios i don't fully understand the whole uh, i haven't looked too deeply into that time lord victorious arc but yeah it's even at you know once we once adelaide uh you know unalives herself at the end of the episode after um, the Doctor saves her, that's when the Doctor realizes that, you know, he's gone too far and that uh, this is the end for him. Um, but instead of just immediately going to the planet of the year to, to start to deal with all of this, he goes on a little joyride. You know, we see that in the 50th anniversary, which I will get to at some point. Um, and then we have the uh you know dreamland so we'll get on to dreamland now now dreamland is a uh it's, a, it's an animated uh story it was originally released in i believe six episodes all around seven minutes long uh the, the whole total is like an average uh, average full length episode of about approximately 44 minutes and basically the doctor decides to go to uh near roswald new mexico and in the 50s and then he un uncovers all this stuff having to do with area 51 and these two races that are at war and so on and so forth one of the races being these big cockroach people um, that are basically, you know, big brutes. They easily can wipe out uh, a civilization. And then these two grey aliens that you, that I guess, the the main reason why they, they look like that is to kind of keep in in my in, 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 intertwined with the Roswell, New Mexico, it's a, yeah, uh, thing where they think you know they're these grey aliens, and it's always been depicted like that, and um, and a lot of media even in the the Simon Pegg Nick Frost film Paul uh, Paul is the 
somewhat depicted like that. And um, so, yeah, it's just, it's an all right story. Um, you know, the, the standout, of course, you know, is David Tennant being David Tennant as well as his wife, Georgia Tennant, or as she is credited in this as Georgia Moffat. So they're obviously, you know, I say about a year or two into dating at this point. So they might be engaged, they might they might not have been, I don't know. Um but yeah, you know, I I like it, it throws you in, you know, it just doesn't like let up or what have you. That's like I said, that's because it's six or seven episodes stitched together and there are parts of the episode that you um that you can see that are uh where an episode had a cliffhanger because you know every episode had a cliffhanger and i believe it aired from november 15th or the 22nd of 2009 all the way up to december 9th and i do remember watching it i have memories of this one but obviously not infinity quest so like i i remember watching a lot of the episodes on uh cbbc and then of course uh they would rerun it as well and so i obviously watch rewatched the reruns but this is the first time i've actually sat down and watched it in full um because i don't remember if i've actually uh if i actually seen from beginning to end um i think i missed a few episodes in between uh as it was airing and then obviously uh, with the reruns so yeah you know it's not that bad you know the animation is a little choppy you know it's not the best it's it's it could be better you know like i said i much prefer the infinity quest um animation and art style i think that is far superior than dreamland is but it's still nostalgic to me you know i have a lot of nostalgic memories for it now this isn't technically canon but i'm still including it on my doctor who rewatch the same with infinity quest those th th these two animated stories might not be canon but i still kind of want to include them in my rewatch so if you are going to do a rewatch of doctor who and you want to include dreamland in your rewatch i would watch it after the waters of mars now i watched it before the water of mars because that's before i figured out the dates in that so yeah you it might take place before the water of Mars, it might take place afterwards. It's kind of hard to pinpoint, but it's, it definitely takes place during the 2009 specials. Um, so yeah, a short one, a short Doctor Who review for once. Now that I'm not, you know, actually reviewing a whole season and just three stories. Um, so how would I rate the 2009 specials? You know, uh, Obviously, the Water of Mars is the f superior one. Um, I'm not going to include the end of Time Parts 1 and 2 in this. Uh, then I would say I would give it to Planet of the Dead. It's it's not that bad. I, do, I definitely really do not like Lady Christina. And I, I'm, I'm glad her big finish audio adventures flopped. Because she's just not that interesting of a character i'm sorry she's just really not and then I've, unfortunately last i do have to put dreamland but i still enjoyed all of the stories uh you know coming back to them uh you know uh, some of them i've maybe watched once or twice but i haven't seen them in several years you know so that's gonna wrap it up um uh, the next month's Doctor Who review will obviously go, is going to, we're just going to jump straight to season five. Um, yeah, I just, I think I'll leave the end of time part one and two uh, for December. And uh, yeah, so in the next review, I'm going to be talking about why uh, I think series five of Doctor Who is yet another near perfect season because to me, there are two near-perfect seasons of Doctor Who. Season 1, which I've already done a review on, and Season 5, which is next month's review. But I still have to watch The End of Time before I even get to that. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. 
and I'll see you all on whatever upload it is because I don't even I haven't even planned out um May's uploads yet. I haven't even finished April's. So I'll see you all on whatever co uh, content I have scheduled next.